Hey you guys. Welcome back. If you can tell from the title of this video, we are doing a unpopular opinion bookish edition. And I asked a bunch of you guys what your what your unpopular opinions were over on Instagram. So that's where I'm pulling these from. So I'm just gonna pull that up real quick because I haven't done that yet. We're just gonna get into it. Okay. The first one, oh this one's crazy. This one's crazy. Oh my gosh. Um, I think the Hunger Games is overrated. I never liked Katniss or the love interests. PETA. Okay, I'm gonna stop you right there because what do you mean you didn't like PETA? Like, I don't care about Katniss. If you don't like Katniss, I mean, like, whatever. I get that. Saying you don't like PETA is the craziest statement I have ever heard in my entire life. And I, even, I haven't even read the book. I haven't read the book. I've only watched the movies, so don't come for me. I know I need to read it. Leave me alone. Um, but, like, PETA is amazing, and I've heard he's better in the books than he is in the movies, so, like, what do you mean? No. <laughs> That's crazy. This one says, I can't stand most love triangles. I almost always hate the main girl involved. I agree with this one so much. Like, so, so, so much. Because I always end up hating the girl in love triangles. Every single time without fail. Um, The Selection, Hated America, uh, Summer After Pretty, Hated Belly, Inheritance Games, I've only read the first one, but I do not like Avery, I'm sorry. Um, What's another one? Oh, I'm reading The Red Queen right now. I hate, um, what's her name, Mare? I hate her. And so, like, what do you mean you can't make the decision between the perfect one and the non-perfect one? Like, especially, oh my gosh, I hate America in The Selection by Kiara Cass. Y'all. How are you trying to decide between Maxon, he's literally a freaking prince, in line to be a king, and he's perfect, and he loves you, or Aspen, who's a guard, who hates you, basically hates you, he broke up with you, he left you, he stalks you, it's gross, it's gross and I hate him and that's why I hate America, because why did it take her three books to pick her? Maxon. The Inheritance Games is so good. See, I don't see this as an, I don't think this is an unpopular opinion because everybody I've heard talking about the Inheritance Games loves it. And I, however, did not like the Inheritance Games. And I, oh, I've only read the first book. So obviously I still need to read the rest of the series to like get the full idea, I guess, and be like, okay, do I like this? Do I not like this? Yeah, I do need to read the whole series. But I just didn't like the first one enough to read the whole series, which is really unusual for me because usually I read the first book and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm obsessed with this, and then I read the series. Guys like the guys in books don't exist in real life. This is just a statement. Like, that's the truth. Um, I have yet to find a guy who's anything like a guy in real life. Can you see my toe? Y'all can see my toe and I don't like it. Stop looking at my toe! They don't exist in real life, and I was actually having a breakdown about this yesterday um, in school. Uh, it was actually really embarrassing, but it's fine because everybody was talking, and I was in like the back corner of class talking to my one of my really good friends um, because I was reading the Red Queen, obviously, and um, like so. <laughs> okay, I was reading the Red Queen, and. I was like maybe 30 pages in and so I was like okay the love interest is Cal right like it is Cal right and I hadn't met his brother yet and so she looks at me and she's like I mean it's kind of like a brother triangle and I was like excuse me brother hello where did the brother come into play and she's like you haven't met him yet I'm like no uh no because I hate love triangles so much. And then I'm like, but Cal is so perfect. Like, he's so amazing. And then I went into this whole thing where, like, um, I was just so upset because there's never going to be a guy <laughs> that's that perfect in real life. Like, and the thing is, I wasn't, she made it sound like I was talking about Cal and that my expectations are so high because we were talking to one of our other friends. And... She was like, so Hannah's expectations are so high. I was like, they are not. And she was like, you were just wanting this fictional dude. I was like, who? And she was like, a prince with fire powers. I was like, that's not what I was talking about. You didn't understand my point. Because I was talking about, like, limp painter guys, like Wes and Charlie. 
and she didn't hear that part. So that's where I'm like, okay, I don't, obviously, like, when I read fantasy books, I'm not wanting their love interest. That's why I love fantasy books so much, because I know that there's never going to be any, because it's fictional, like, it's a different world. That's why, like, Jax, from the ballad, from, what is it called? From Once Upon a Broken Heart, I love him. He's literally the love of my life, and I can say that with full confidence, because he's not anywhere close to real. He's literally a fake. He's immortal. Like, I know he's not going to be real. But the thing with the Pager books is that, like, Wes and Charlie and Nick are so perfect. They're so perfect. And, like, the thing is with that is that they can be real. Like, <laughs> this is my problem with reading romance books. Because I always, I'm like, if it's, like, an actual romance book where, like, it happens in the real world, like, this is literally going on in Nebraska. And so, I was like, but, like, People can be like that, like, they can, they can, they can. Especially like Charlie, because we see that how many mistakes that Charlie makes. Like, we see that he makes a bet about what's-her-face, Bailey. We see that he ditches her, we see that he avoids her, and, like, we see all the mistakes that he's making, but he, like, he apologizes, and he, like, it, it works out and stuff. So, like, obviously they can be real. And so my standards are high, but they're not impossible to the point where I want a prince who has fire powers. That's not what I'm saying! All I'm saying is that I want a wind painter boy. bad mood the rest of the day because I was like having a crisis about the Red Queen because I was like what do you mean she's not in love with Cal I have met him for like probably 10 pages and I'm already in love with him like oh she was being so mean to him too anyways next one the summer I turned pretty is kind of hard to read mainly because of belly I did not like The Summer I Turned Pretty. I read the first book. It was fine. I read it while I was on a cruise, and it was really the only book that I brought, and it was before I started reading. So yeah, I thought it was fine. And then I went and picked up the second book, which is, like, really sad. It has a lot of grief, and it's just really, 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 really slow. Like, very, very, very slow. And so I just could not get into it, and I never finished the second one, and I haven't read the third one. Team Conrad, Team Jeremiah, Team Anti-Belly! That's me! Nicknames are kind of overused in books. Don't agree with this one. I am a sucker for a good nickname. And it's not the nickname. I don't like pet names. I was talking to this, I was talking about this with my friend yesterday too as I was going through this crisis. Because I was talking about Lim Painter books and their nicknames for, like, it was just so cute. Um, but I don't like pet names. The whole pet names thing is so disgusting. I hate it so much. Like, if it's not a spin on their actual name, I don't want it. You know? Unless it's like, wait, hang on, what does Kai call Peyton? Hey. Oh no, that's good. I like that one. Um, see, none of these are really like, okay, Sarge. Sarge is cute, but that's not a pet name. That's just a cute little nickname that Robbie has for her. Sarge is cute. I'm going to say this, um, Once Upon a Broken Heart, I love that series so much. And I actually really like when Jax uses this nickname for Evangeline. But, like, I also really hate it, um, because it's just, like, gross. Like, I don't want to say it out loud, but I'm going to. Okay, so Jax calls Evangeline Little Fox because Evangeline's last name is Fox, um, and because of, like, the whole Archer and the Fox story. Um, I love it when he says it, and I, like, always get giggly, but, like, I can't stand it. Like, if anybody else used it in any other book, I'd be like, what did you just say? And it's the o it's only because it's Jax, and I love Jax so much, but, like... Also, Caraval, when, what's his face? Julian, he calls Scarlet Crimson, and it's so cute, and, like, he only uses Crimson as her name. Like, he doesn't say Scarlet at all. So, when he calls her Scarlet, everybody's like, whoa, what just happened? And everybody knows it just got serious, and everybody's scared. And I like that. Like, I like, I do like nicknames. I can't even say, like, that. I, I, I don't agree with this one at all. Um, I love the nicknames. Love it. Lib, Libby, Bay. <laughs> um, I don't, does Nick have a nickname for Emily? I think it's just like M or something. Or like Pei. Or, what's another one? Oh, Dina from Powerful. Um, yeah, uh, Crimson, Tella. Tella is just like what everybody calls her though, even though her name's Donatella. 
Um, Sarge, so cute. Oh my god. I'm a sucker for a good nickname. I'm sorry, I just am. So I don't agree with this one at all. Um, I don't reread books. I just look back over my favorite parts. Okay, yeah, I can get with this one. This one, that makes sense. Because rereading a whole entire book is a little bit crazy. I've only done that with Lynn Painter books. And I think only a Lynn Painter book. I've reread that. Yeah. But like other books, I'll just flip back to my favorite pages because I do it so often that I just know where to go. Or I don't really pick up the book that often because if y'all can see these bookshelves, like a lot of the times I want to pick back up Powerless or Reckless, but they're on the very bottom of my fantasy shelf. And my fantasy shelf is a little bit tall. And so I have to take all those books off to get to the bottom. I listen to audiobooks if I want to like go back and reread re-listen to a certain part, I'll just pu put on the audiobook. So I've done that for Powerless, Reckless, the Cruel Prince series, um, the ba uh, I always call it the Battle of Never After, Once Upon a Broken Heart, I've done it for that, uh, I think that's it. And then like sometimes I'll just go on Pinterest and search up the book and I'll come up with a bunch of cute little pages and I love doing that so I can get with that. Um, this one, I love this one, okay, you can judge a book by its cover. 100% because if I pick up a book and I don't like the cover I'm not even gonna flip and look at the back it's just a big no for me if I don't like the cover and it's a really hard thing for me to not like the cover I will say if a cover has an actual person on it not like the cartoon things that Lynn does I love Lynn Painter's little cartoon characters if they have a real life person where they had to take that person into a studio take a picture of it say yes that looks good to go on the front of a book and then put it on a book I will not be picking that book up. I'm sorry I'm not going to do it. Like, it's not happening. So yeah, 100% you can judge a book by its cover. I do that all the time. I know it's not unpopular with everyone, but books are with, without smut are better. Yes. I agree. Because I think it's just so much cuter, where it's like, because the, the tension is just higher. And also, I don't care if you're like an adult reading smut or you're reading an adult book, like, Yes, that's probably going to have smut unless it's a clean, sweet romance. Um, but young adult books should not have any kind of smut, spice, anything in it. I'm so sorry. And if you are the kind of person who reads smut, I don't, I don't care if you do it or not. Read an adult book. Don't have authors be putting it in young adult books because you want to read it. That is so awful because young adults are reading these books. Like, 12, 13, 14 year olds are reading these books, they should not be reading that. Icebreaker makes me so physically angry, like I can't even, like the author of that book needs to be stopped. Like that should be against the law, y'all. That's literally like, like, it, it's rated, that would be, if it was a movie it'd be rated R. So why should it be in books that are under 18? Young adult books are made for people under 18. I don't care if you're an adult reading, I don't care, I don't care. But they're made for under 18 people. So if they have rated R content, if this content, if the content in Icebreaker was in a movie, it'd be rated R. And rated R movies, people under 18 are not legally able to see it without an adult present. And so why is it legal to put them in young adult books? I don't get it, and I hate it, I hate it so much because every time I pick up a book, I have to do so much extensive research to make sure that there's nothing in it, even though it's a young adult book. Like, that's so annoying to me. And it's not anything to hate on people who read it. I don't care if you read it or not. Hear me when I say that. I don't care if you read it or not. It's my personal opinion. I know a lot of people, a lot of other people are like that, especially people my age. It should not be in young adult books. It should not be in young adult books. A lot of the time, I prefer reading on Kindle. Okay. See, Kindle, oh, I don't have my earrings in. Dang it. Oh, I read around like 50-50 because I have like maybe 36 books on my shelf, like physical books. And then I've read like around, what, 50, 56 books, I think. So a lot of those are also on Kindle. And so it's like, it's very 50-50 for me. I don't really have a preference. I will say, if I'm going out, like, when I was on vacation, especially in this little beach town in Florida, I 
brought my Kindle and I brought a lot of the books that I was going to read on Kindle because I knew walking around if we were ever just like stopped or like in a line for something I'd want to pull up my Kindle and start reading because pulling out a whole book and starting to read and like having to take the bookmark out and everything it's just a lot of work to be out in public doing that so yes if I'm out in public or I'm like on vacation and I just want to pull out a book to read I'm going to use my Kindle if I'm at home if I'm like comfortable or if I'm going to like if I'm going to the beach and like I'm sitting specifically for reading I'll bring a book because sometimes you just, like, sometimes you just want to pull out your book and you want to be like, yeah, I'm reading this book. Look at me, look at me, look at me. Like, if I was reading better than the movies out in public, I will bring it out in public. And I did. I did. This one says I low-key hate love triangles, but it depends. I hate love triangles so much. Hate them so much. I hate them. I shouldn't, I hate that trope so much. Blonde MMCs aren't that bad. Okay, so when you say that, I've gone on this tangent before with multiple different people. Um... Because I personally will not date a blonde guy. It's not going to happen. They never seem nice, and I've never met a nice one that's blonde. Um, so when you say blonde MMCs aren't that bad, it depends on what you mean by bad. If you mean, like, they're literally a villain and they like, kill people, okay. But, like, if you mean, like, they kill people, like, they're murderous, um, but I'm in love with them because they're amazing, it goes both ways, because if we think about it from an actual point, um, Jax from Once Upon a Broken Heart, I am absolutely in love with him, don't get me wrong, but he is a murderer, and a fate, and a mortal, um, and he's blonde, I'm sorry, but he is, and he's murderous, even though I'm in love with him, but in real life I would not date him, um, Aaron Warner, we all love him so, so, so much, um, he is a murderer, <laughs> And he is blonde. Um, so that's two. Three. Um, Kit. <laughs> Kit Azar. Nobody is in love with him. If you're in love with Kit Azar, I'm sorry. You have a problem. <laughs> um, he is so awful. And awful. Um, yeah. So those are three people who, one of them I just hate because they're awful. And two of them, they're amazing, and we love them, and they're so sweet to the person that they're in love with. But they are murderers, guys. They are. Um, so it depends on what you mean by bad. So, yeah. I'm going to leave it at that. In Between by Gracie fits better for Charlie and Bailey than for Wes and Liz. Okay, so this one is unpopular. I know it. Because... Um, and you guys are going to be like, oh my gosh, what are you talking about? Because I make Better Than The Movies shorts with the song In Between by Gracie Abrams all the time. Um, and personally, I do think that it fits betting on you better. Because, because, that one part where it's like, he laughs at her eyes, at her smile, at the glasses on her face. Which I get Liz is supposed to wear glasses, but I'm blocking that out personally because I didn't know that she wore glasses till my third reread. Um, and I think that she fits better without glasses. But Bailey, I think she deserves glasses, like 100%. And he literally calls her glasses. So that's one where it fits Betty on you better than better than the movies. Um, at the glasses on her face. She loves how he talks late at night when there's no one else awake. <gasps> y'all okay here's where we come into play um yes Liz and Wes did do that little call thing at night after the bas after the basketball game but she never talked about his voice Bailey and Charlie on the other hand they while they were on the camping or not the camping trip the ski trip to where were they I don't know where they were but they were on a ski trip and while Bailey was on the pullout and what, or Charlie was on the floor, Bailey literally, like, in her chapter, she's like, oh, his voice, like, his voice is so cute. And she's always talking about his voice when she's, like, either calling him at night or talking to him at night. Um, and she's always talking about his voice. Always, 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 always. So, yeah, I do think it fits um, betting on you better than it fits better than the movies. I'm sorry, but it does. Um, next, moving on. I don't like the bookshelves arranged by colors. It makes me feel uncomfortable. Um, see, I'm a very organized person. Um, so if I had a bookshelf where it was like vertical, there w I probably would go through a decorating phase where they are all in rainbow order. 
And that's just me, because I think it's cute. I do. Like, those rooms, I think, who was that? I think, isn't it Destiny? Doesn't she have her bookshelves by color? But I think it's so cute when you have, like, a whole wall of bookshelves, um, and it's arranged by color. I think it's so cute. I really do. Um, but I also think, like, other bookshelves are cute, like, when it's just, like, arranged by series or genre or whatever. Like, Hayley Pham's bookshelves, so adorable. So, I don't think I really have a preference, honestly. Dog earring pages isn't the crime book talk makes it out to be. Um, I will say book talk does really over dramatize the whole dog earring pages and stuff. But me personally, if I lend somebody a book, which is why I haven't, by the way, I don't lend people books because I'm scared of what they're gonna do to it. Um, but I, if I lended somebody my book that I bought with my money, and it comes back with a broken spine or pages that are dog-eared, I will lose my mind. Um, that's the only thing, like, if it's your book and you bought it and you dog ear the pages and stuff, I don't care. Like, you do you. Um, but if you're doing that to somebody else's book, you should go to jail. I'm so sorry, that's so awful. Um, and yes, book talk does make it out to be a really big crime. If it's your book, I do not care. But, don't do that to other people's books. That's it. The Divergent series is not the good. I've never read the Divergent series, so I can't really talk about this. So, moving on. Um, the cheat sheet is not worth the hype. Okay, so I didn't know cheat sheet had hype. They're talking about the cheat sheet by Sarah Adams. If you haven't read it, go read it. It's really good. Um, I didn't know the cheat sheet had hype at all. I read it because one of my friends had read it, and I hadn't read it like a sports romance before, and it was a football player and a dancer, and I was like, okay, that sounds really good, and it was clean. I was like, okay, so I'm going to read it, because I just read Reckless, and it just felt like a good pick-me-up, because that ending of Reckless was crazy. But, I didn't know it had hype. Um, but if it did, it 100% deserves it. I mean, I really liked that book. I'm not gonna lie to y'all, I liked it so much. And it's my favorite Sarah Adams book. It was so good, it was so cute. I love, love, what is his name? Anyways, I loved the guy. I don't know his name at this very moment. I think it was Levi, but I can't tell you. I don't know what it is. But I loved their dynamic and I loved how cute it was and I loved the fake dating thing. I loved that they were friends and then they started fake dating and but it was like actually real dating. It was so cute and I loved it. And that's what made me love the fake dating trope. Absolutely loved it. I think it deserves a hype. Uh, this is the last one. It just says spice in books is unneeded. I agree. I'm not going to go off on that tangent again because I get so mad. If you have any unpopular opinions, put them in the comments and maybe I'll make another video like this. Because this was really fun and I love talking about this. That's the end of this video. I hope you guys liked it. And if you did, subscribe and like and turn on your notifications. And then go follow my social medias. I have Instagram, TikTok, Goodreads, and YouTube Shorts. And they're all in my description or in my bio. And, oh, go buy some book charms. I have one right here that I'm using right now actually. This is the powerless or the powerful one and I love it so much. I use this one for all of the fantasy books I read and then I use the better than the movies one for all of the romance books I read. But yeah, this is the powerful one. The links are in my bio. I have powerful, careable, and better than the movies for sale right now, so go buy those. And yeah, just have the best day ever and go read some more books.